So mm-hmm. she reached out to me and she was like, hey, Kyle, this is dope what you're doing. We had a small little conversation in that, in that um, time. Don't mix me up too much. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to get into the specifics. Yeah, don't go into the specifics. Then you got to get into the specifics. But I would just like for you to give a little bit of insight, as much as you'd like. Okay. As much as you'd like. And what we spoke about. Kyle always uses his platform to talk about financial literacy, which I think is really beautiful, and the passage of generational wealth. And I feel like sometimes what's missing in that conversation, not just from Kyle, but also in the generalized conversations that we see happening further, broader in our community, but also nationally, is in order to create financial wealth that's going to mean something, the primary foundation of that has to be your relationship with your family. If that is not prioritized, then whatever you are trying to build for your children or your grandchildren will go to waste Mm. because the primary relationships that matter are not being poured into. And so we have a lot of elders in our community that get upset at the young people when they move away. And they're like, oh, the young people don't care. I I made a video one time. Um, about the real estate market in the Virgin Islands. And I had a real estate agent come into me and was like, hey, everything that you said was nice and everything, but your own local people, your elders, come into my office every day and say that their children are uninterested in the property. And so I have to sit on and question, well, if this is prime real estate mm-hmm. and if everybody seems to want a slice of paradise, then why wouldn't the people that are of this land want to uphold the slice of paradise that has been passed down their bloodline and when you get to the crux of it a lot of it is because there are no meaningful relationships that make it worth it for them to continue upholding that property and so if we don't do better in the way that we treat our children the way that we uplift our children the way that we educate our children but most importantly the way that we love our children and the quality of love that we give our children we will continue to generate generational wealth and then in the next generation it's completely squandered or the government gets it because we are not doing the true important work of maintaining and creating meaningful relationships with the people we hope to pass this gift on to i see why she's my favorite friend like, uh, i see why she's my favorite friend you know man <laughs> I couldn't say that any better. For the next senator of yeah. the United States, bro. I she couldn't say that. So. I couldn't yeah. say that any better, like, bro. And what she said is so true because if I build in this thing and this empire with my kids in mind, and they're not included in the process at all, and at the end of the thing, I'm like, hey, this is yours. This is what you're gonna do with it. You already went off to live your life because I went paying you no mind. I wasn't showing you the love and, and, and adornment that I needed to show you. You're gone on your own journey. I can't stop you from where you is in Philadelphia, in Florida, being a dentist, being whatever, and you stop. You live in your own life to come back here because I get a piece of property. No, 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 come deal with it. That's the wrong way to do this thing. You have to ingratiate them in the process. They got to be involved. You're, guys, these petty little squabs and stuff, like, especially. I know how these elders in the community is. Is, is are you way or no way? So then, as a as a, a youth in the community, okay, you have that. Okay, daddy, you have that. That's yours. I going over here, and then you are gonna complain that the young people and don't want to be involved here. No, we just don't want to be involved with you. 